Hey everybody, welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to see how to recreate these effects. So, you have an image here on your JIT window, and you can paint on this image, let's say you can paint using your mouse, so you can uh, create this effect. So, it's basically distorting the coordinates to sample the image according to the mouse uh, position. So, that's the effect. Let's see with another image. Let's say this one. You have this kind of effect. You can make the radius bigger. Mm -hmm. Can make it stronger. So, yeah, that's it. So, let's see how to recreate this, um, this effect. So let's delete uh, almost everything, so we can start from scratch. So, okay, what do I have here? I have a JIT world with the name of the context called W15, full-scale anti-aliasing, sides of the window 320 by 240, as you can see I already resized it, window position 1100, so it should be like here, but I already uh, moved the window here, erase color so to have a black background and full, full screen menu part 0. So this is just the uh, usual attributes that we gave to, to a JIT world object. Then what do I have here? I have a get sides message that gets banged um, every once uh, in a second. So this will give me from the right outlet of the JIT world object the sides, the actual sides of the JIT window. And then I have the send window either mouse one, which means that to the window object inside the JIT world has been sent the message either mouse, uh, which means that now the window will keep track of our mouse position uh, and this mouse position will be sent out in pixels. So when I'm here, this is the first pixel, uh, around the first pixel, with coordinate 0, 0, and then when I go on, all the coordinates of the window will be output from the right um, outlet of JIT world in pixel coordinates. Okay, perfect. Then I have a send metro here, and uh, this, will, this is just our bang our render bank, so that's been sent here with a send metro message. Now, first thing we need is to get an image inside this patch. So let's create a JIT matrix and let's create also an import movie message with a bank. So the image will be uh, then uh, will be output from the matrix when after being um, imported. Let's create a JITP window to see our image. So we'll just take the image from before. There it is. Then what we need is uh, a JIT GLPix because this algorithm works on the GPU. So by using GGLPix object. Then we need a GGL video plane to visualize uh, our image on the window. So let's do it like that. Let's create a bank to bang out our JIT matrix and visualize it on the window. Exactly. So, okay. Let's see what we need after that. Uh, we need a way to get uh, the position of our mouse in the window, but uh, we need to get this position in uh, normalized coordinates. So we need to divide the mouse uh, idle output for the window sides in order to get coordinates between 0 and 1. So let's do that. As you can see, we have uh, a get sides message here which gives us the sizes of the window every once in a second and a mouse idle out message that gives us the mouse position in pixels. 
So we can use a, a root message with uh, mouse, eagle, and sides to get our mouse idle here from the left outlet and uh, the sides from the right outlet. So yeah, it works like that. Now we just want the first two uh, numbers from the mouse idle uh, list, which are the coordinates of the mouse. So we can simply use uh, a $1, $2message in order to get just the first two uh, the first two values from the list and then we can use a backsp object to divide uh, the mouse positions for the window sides in order to get normalized uh, mouse position coordinates yeah as you can see here it is around 1 and 1 and here it is around 0 and 0 in the center it will be something like 0 0.5 0 0.5 so we have our normalized uh, mouse coordinates. So let's send this as mouse boss. Okay. So let's go inside GGLPX. We need the now to create uh, a parameter called the mouse boss. So our mouse position in normalized coordinates. Let's set it to a default value of 0, 0. And uh, what we have to do is to get the distance from the mouse to every pixel in the image. So to do that, we create a normal, uh, normal object which gives us uh, normalized coordinates and we subtract these two vectors. So the current coordinates normalized of the pixel in which uh, GGLPix is working on uh, and we subtract to that the mouse coordinates so we get a vector that goes from the mouse to the single pixel. Then we take the length of this vector so we now have the length. Uh, let me show you how this looks like. We now have the vector that goes from the mouse to every pixel in the image uh, to see how this looks like let's attach a metro here whoops here let's uh, create a receiver so we can receive our mouse coordinates and let's prepare a message uh, mouse boss so these are now our mouse coordinates if i'm not wrong oh no i didn't write it like this mouse boss okay so yeah these are the distance uh, between the mouse position and every pixel in the image the length of the vector from every pixel in the image to the mouse position now let's take actually the smooth step of this uh, length so from 0 for example to 0 0.2 see how this looks like so now when the distance uh, is less than zero, so actually never, we will get a zero. And between zero and 0 0.2, we will get a smooth transition on numbers. And above 0 0.2, we will get a one. So this is why the mouse is now, uh, the distance is now looking like that. Now we actually want this, the, this value is greater when the mouse, uh, when the pixel is closer to the mouse. So let's actually reverse the output from the smooth step by using a minus one. So we now have the distance bigger when the mouse is uh, uh, when the mouse is uh, closer to the pixels. Okay, perfect. So uh, what we have to what we want to do now is to sample this uh, the image that comes in. Let's actually set a bound mode of clamp for the sample object. So it will just clamp to the last pixels if the value of the coordinates go above 1. Uh, let's set this as our output. Exactly. And then let's use... If we just use normalized coordinates, we just get the image as it is. But let's add to the normalized coordinates the distance from the mouse. So 
let's do that. And this is how it looks like. Now the value here are a bit too big and uh, um, the normalized coordinates are being uh, offset too much. So let's multiply this value for a smaller number. Exactly, so this is how actually we want it to be. Let's actually make this uh, a parameter that we can change from the oxide. So let's create a param strength. Uh, let's give it a default value of 0 0.1 and let's multiply this by strength. Okay, perfect. Now, this is already good, but uh, we need a way now to store our normalized coordinates and to reuse them in the next frame because otherwise they are creatively fresh to every frame for every pixel. But we actually want to store this, uh, the result of this operation and then to use it uh, in the next frame. So what we can do is to create our normalized coordinates outside of this GGL peaks actually, and then input in the GGL peaks and uh, output from the GGL peaks and uh, input back, back again in the um, coordinates text to, to reuse them in the next frame. Let's see actually what I mean with that. So in order to create uh, normalized coordinates, let's create another GGLPix object. Let's give it v15, and it also needs uh, the type must be float32. Otherwise, the coordinates will not be generated in the right way. So am I getting some errors? This was the errors from before. Okay. So let's pass actually this matrix to this GGL peaks and let's attach a GGL texture. Uh, let's give it a name, chord. Let's attach this here. And in the GGL peaks, let's actually just uh, output normalized coordinates. So let's do actually like that. Let's create a vector for because ggrpix will output by default a four plane uh, texture. Let's switch the x and the y. And let's fill our output texture with normalized coordinates from the input matrix. So they will be the same uh, amount as the input matrix. So now we have our text to coordinates. We can also visualize them. And they look exactly like that. So we want now to input those text to coordinates inside GGLPix and use them as uh, our normalized coordinates. So let's do like that. Instead of using norm, we now want to use these normalized coordinates. So let's bang this texture, exactly. And now, as you can see, it works. It works like before, because we are using normalized coordinates per input from the outside. Now, in order to have a feedback with these normalized coordinates, uh, so to, uh, to save them and use them in the next frame, we have to output those coordinates here, and then fix feed them back again inside the GGL texture. And this is how we can get this effect. Now, as you can see, uh, actually our texture coordinates are not so... Uh, the, t the image looks a bit pixelated. And this is probably because also this GGL Pix needs the type float32. Otherwise, the texture coordinates will be output in the wrong resolution. Exactly. So this is how we need a, a resolution of float32. So the texture coordinates go inside this texture that fits uh, is there actually texture coordinates here that get uh, summed with the distance 
from the mouse for every pixel and then output and then feedback inside this texture here. So we can always use the previous texture coordinates. Let's create now a parameter called strength, which is the strength of our is the strength of the distortion. So let's set it maybe to a smaller number. Exactly. And we have we have the same effect. Now, actually, to reset the, the effect, we just have to send a bang here. Exactly. Then we can also set a parameter called radius. So let's create a message called radius. Here. So param radius. Uh, let's start with 0 0.05, actually. And we can use this value here, so from 0 to radius. So, radius is really small, exactly. Exactly. So this is our algorithm. If you want to make it a bit more efficient, we can avoid to bang the GGL peaks every frame. We can actually also just create another texture, GGL texture. Bang our image inside this texture in the beginning. Something like that, exactly. And then when we receive a, a mouse movement, we can do something like that. First, we send the mouse position to the GGL peaks. And then we send a bang to this texture in order to have the algorithm a bit more efficient. So we'll just bang out a texture when it receives a mouse position. So, so yes, guys, this was the algorithm. I hope you found this uh, interesting. And uh, if you have some questions, just, uh, just ask me. So thank you for viewing this. So if you like this video, there are a lot more on my channels and I also encourage you to visit my website where there is also a lot more stuff. My website is www.federicofoderaro.com. I will write in the comments. And if you want to support me, you can check also my Patreon in which I share a lot of patches uh, all related to visual programming with Max. So check out my Patreon if you want to have some cool visual patches. Okay, so that's it. See you on the next tutorial. Ciao, guys.